Hi Tarot Tribe, it's Ethany and I have a video response video today to the lovely Katie Flowers and her question about, well her video, on underrated tarot decks. Now I'm just going to do tarot decks today, I may do oracle decks if you want me to, um, but I'm just going to do tarot and most of these decks are indie decks. Uh, I have two mainstream decks or two mass produced published decks. Everything else is indie decks. Um, and you probably have seen some of these before. Some of them are new though. Some of them I have not shared at all on my YouTube channel. I started to get these out and oh my god, I was like, oh, and this one, oh, and this one, no, oh my gosh, and this one. So there's a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. We could be here a while. So I get, uh, get comfy to the point where I've had to put another chair up here. Um, <laughs> I had to put another chair up here and uh, stacks of decks right now. Yeah. So let's get started. So underrated, look, let's face it, underrated, what we feel as rated or underrated or overrated is very personal. Um, so I'm not kind of going to go into how I've uh, kind of gone through it but for me it's decks that I don't see a lot of on social media because I'm on social media like a lot um, and that I would love to see more of okay so this is the first one which is the for Nuna I'm gonna say this wrong the for Nuna tarot I have done a unboxing video of this deck and I don't know if it's still on it's the backs I it's still on Etsy but you can find the link to that in that video I don't see this at all. I'm going to have to start posting with this deck because I don't see it. It's so beautiful. It's very, very different to a lot of um, decks that are out there. As you can see, it's not in English. This is a Puerto Rican deck. So, um, but I mean, that's like the nine of swords. That's the Ten of Swords. That's the Page of Swords. So you can kind of get, I'll just flick through a couple more. You can kind of get an idea. But I, what I love about it is she has a very distinct palette for each one of the court, each one of the court card, um, sorry, each one of the suits, which links it up to the, um, the elements. This is such a pretty deck. Like, I mean, you're gonna like it or you're not, but I think this is underrated. I would love to see more about more of this deck, more people sharing this deck. And like I said, this is gonna be a long video, so I don't want to spend too much time on each one. I have done a lot of unboxings for these. I've done a lot of um, reviews and things like that. So the next one is the Animalis or Fortuna Tarot deck by Megan Webber. Now what I don't understand about how this deck is not more popular is that this like vibe, this uh, aesthetic with bones and black and white and animals is super popular and yet I don't see this deck uh, much at all on social media which is a blinking shame. And again, I need to, well, I'm gonna say that about all these decks, about working with them, but I need a better way of having them out. I live in a, an apartment and I don't have my, I used to have all of my decks out very easily for me to be able to go get them, but now they have to be kind of in drawers um, away from my son so he doesn't ruin them. It's like, I don't understand, like this is so like the thing right now. Um, so go show this lady some love, my gear. So this is an Etsy deck, independent. I'm not going to lie to you. It's made by the Game Crafter. I don't know if she's changed it, but when I purchased it this years ago, it was done by the Game Crafter. So if anyone, you know, a lot of people were like, oh no, the Game Crafter. So they don't do great cardstock. But um, man, like I feel like this should be picked up by a publisher. I really do. Like why is this not... Why is this not getting more love? Um, and she has an oracle deck too, which I don't have yet. But 
go show this lovely lady some love and she gives you like a there's no um, book but she gives you an information about the about the animals that she's used in there so yeah I don't get it I don't get it I don't understand me not the comprehend day the next one is the whispering tarot I'm pretty sure this is out of print so I'm really sorry if everyone's gonna be you could try to find it um, by Elizabeth Hazel this was the limited first edition 2008 so this is how long I've had this deck and you can see from my box it has it has gone it has gone places with me people this was you know numbered and signed and everything It's a little mini deck. Really, you can you can see I have worked with it quite a bit because the edges are all a bit tattered. I've been thinking about this deck a lot before um, Katie uh, did her video, and I was actually thinking about doing an underrated video. There's two things that happened today. First, well, yesterday was this the underrated tarot decks because I was thinking about doing it. it's on my list. I've got a big list of videos that I want to do and that was on there and I was like we are in the same and then the second one was one of my decks um my wild, wild moon woman has just talked about and I'm like again girl <laughs> I mean it's so pretty I'm hoping that you guys can see some of these images I'm shaking a little bit today so sorry about that I may have to do another video on just this one and go through it. So you, with this, I got a downloadable PDF, which I printed off and put in a, in a binder because I wanted to read about her process. And that's half of the fun for me for Indie Decks. I love reading about the process because I am a tarot nerd. Nerd. So I don't, um, I don't see that deck at all, like hardly ever. So maybe it's because it's sitting in people's collections and they just aren't on social media. The next one is the Saki Saki Tarot. It has gotten more love recently, which I'm so glad about. Um, you get a little, you get this box. When you do get it, you get to put the box together, which is really cool. It comes flat packed, which is so smart to save on um, postage. You do get a little white book, but I also have the big book, the book of symbols. I bought both um, as the set. So this is, and I love this. Come on, let's play. I've done a review of this, I believe, over on my website before I had a YouTube channel. Why I wasn't on YouTube a million years ago, I don't know. So this was a limited edition for 3,000 decks. Man, that would have been a lot of, lot of uh, storage. Um, by Monica. Oh, my gosh. Please say it's on the back here. Yeah. Monica Kleosaki, and I love her. I love her. Hi, honey. Um, I love her face. I love her um, Instagram so much. And look at these these backs just make me so fucking happy. Look at them. They're so beautiful. My camera's not going to do it any justice. But this is gorgeous, like, lime. Oh, this is turquoise and lime. I just love it. The cardstock is lovely. It's matte finished. She gives you a astrological reference card. And it is funky as it's so beautiful it's so lovely and out there and just divine see this this video has made me just like want to sit and play with my cards like just sit and just enjoy sifting through my cards like it's oh every Every card is like this stunning freaking piece of artwork and I don't, maybe it is more popular than I, than I think, but I don't see it a lot, like, and I don't understand why it's so beautiful. The time and effort that would have gone into creating this, I love that the, um, the borders are like hardly there at all and the borders are all different colours. 
it is really a beautiful deck and it's I'm going through quite a lot of them because I just I'm obsessed <clears throat> um, and I love that she talks about playing the book is called playing with symbols and I love how it's joy and playing and inspiring the artist in us and I just think that's just like totally something that I jam with so I love this deck and I wish I'd see more of it on I don't even know if she has any left if she does I would get on that I feel like I need to get another copy of this <clears throat> starting to do that. I never did that before. I never was someone who had more than one copy of decks, but <laughs> I'm starting to. Okay, so this next one, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to butcher this. I don't know how to say this. The Chimonte deck, the Ch the Chimonte Teti. <laughs> you can all laugh at me because I don't know what that is. Um So it's about that. I tried. And failed miserably. So this was a Kickstarter or Indiegogo? I think it was a Kickstarter. And I got the Sonic, the, the soundtrack to it as well. This is limited edition too. So you get a companion book in there. The cardstock's pretty good. It is a smaller deck. That's the backs. And they're pretty. Beautiful work. Um, this is by Eden Gallanter. Yeah. And I backed this one on Kickstarter. See, da, 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 da. <clears throat> and this is really just some stunning artwork. Another deck I don't work with enough, but every time I post it on Instagram, people are like, "Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful!" And it is. So watercolor paintings. I'm getting a lot of court cards. I don't know why, but I love that. Look at that. Each one of the hands is holding one of the suits. Do -do -do -do. Beautiful. So, yeah, I backed this one on Kickstarter. Um, I've had it for a couple of years. I think there's a few copies left on her website, I think. But again, I don't see it. I don't see this. I don't see it. I know she, people backed it and it was a successful project and I'm like, where is the deck hiding? <laughs> I have to put them away because I have limited space where I'm, where I am right now. Okay, so. Told you this is going to be a long one. Next one is the Black Lily Tarot deck. Now this is the Major Arcana deck, but this is the whole shebang. The whole shebang, shebang. So this is Aya Rosen. So you get a little booklet which has keywords. Good eyesight or a micro or a little magnifying glass. That's, it's an, another smaller deck, another game crafter deck. So, but the card stock isn't too bad on this one. This is a very okay. So there's nudity. You have been warned. Um, this is a very feminine deck. I don't think there's any male figures in this deck at all. And I think it's sold out, but she does have other decks like um the curious a curious oracle and oh crap, I can't remember the other one off the top of my head. Um so find her on Etsy and follow her because if she does reprints, you can find out. Lots of swords. Let's try and find you some different ones to look at. Really, like, very unique artwork. Gosh, a lot of court cards today. So the ones are trees. So 
So that's, and I just, yeah, I don't, I don't see this, this deck at all, again, on social media. So I would say it's underrated. That's how I guess I'm going with this. It's like decks that I feel are really beautiful that I don't see a lot of like posts with them. I don't see a lot of people working with them. I don't see a lot of people talking about them. Um, that kind of jazz. Oh, that's got to go back in the pouch. All right, I'll do that later. <clears throat> and then the next one is another indie deck, which is the Fellowship of the Fool deck by Helena Dominic. Um, and a lot of these decks are really great because um, a lot of us have watched and um, have responded. I haven't responded to Tarot So White uh, that Kelly and Maddox was talking about. And a lot of these decks are very... Um, because they are indie, they aren't so white, <laughs> which is great. I don't like my decks being white either. That's why I didn't do that for my Oracle deck. So this is actually, this story of this deck is so great. Um, I have the book. I bought the set. It's another little, 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 small, smaller English. Um, itchy nose. It's a smaller deck. It comes in a pretty... I'm going to be honest, pretty crappy cardboard box, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. I keep it in a pouch. But the cardstock is lovely. It's um, laminated and all that kind of stuff. So this deck is people, the models, it's very pagan, very witchy, very Wiccan imagery um, in this deck. And these are members of her community members of her a lot of friends and family and members of her um of her community so I loved that that it's like real people and real body shapes <clears throat> so beautiful if you haven't seen this deck and this is the first time you've seen this deck it's another one that I don't really feel like gets a lot of love and I feel like it should My camera really has a issue focusing, like it'll focus on me, but then it doesn't. You get a great, if you get the set, you get a great guidebook too, which is pretty bad. So that's the, <laughs> I love that, I like that, no, 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 no. Um, this is the Fellowship of the Fool. Tarot. Another deck I feel is pretty underrated. In my not so humble opinion, because apparently I'm not a very humble person. I'm in some stuff. I, I basically just talk a lot of crap. Okay, so the next one is another, <laughs> like I said, mostly are indie, indie decks. This is the deck that Elise from Wild Moon Tarot just spoke about. It's the fifth tarot. It's a nice big card. It's about the size of the Star Child Tarot for a lot of us who've got that deck. Um, but laminated, uh, like that pl plastic laminated cardstock. Not a massive fan of the cardstock, but yeah. So this actually has a whole new suit called the Lotuses, which takes place of spirit. So it's called the fifth tarot because it does go through the elements of earth, air, water, fire and spirit. So it's a very unique deck and the artwork is so stunning. You get a set. So if you buy this deck, it's a book and card set. A lot of animal imagery. Look at that. So pretty. It does kind of have its own system. So, you know, you kind of do need the the book with it. And like I said, Elise at uh, Wild Moon Tarot just did a flip through. I'll do a review when I, you know, like when I've done all the other reviews I need to do. So you can go check out her video on it if you want to have a look at the flip through, but it's just, yeah, 
it's a stunning deck and I really appreciate it. And another one that's very underrated in my opinion. Another one I want to work with. I love them all. Gosh, I'm such a Gemini. So pretty. Really, really good book, by the way. It's over in my, uh, that way, very quite far away. Um, but a nice, really thick guidebook, like a, a journey book. This is not just like a little, a little white book. Not that you can't get a lot in them. I've got them too, but it's a nice journey book for a different, the fact that it's a different, it's a lovely journey book for the fact that it's a different sort of structure. Okay, the next deck is the Illusory Tarot. I don't know if this is around anymore. I'm sorry if I'm giving you like all the like wants for some decks that are out of print. This was a um, limited edition tarot deck that I don't see enough of and it is really beautiful. So you've got keywords there. to help with um, the meaning and the artwork is so freaking stunning. Oh, so great. Like, I don't know why I don't see more of this. The cardstock is really great. The backs are killer. Um, she's done an amazing job of this work. And I adore it. So this is the Illusory Tarot. Oh gosh, I can't remember your name, love. We've I've been following you on Instagram for like four years, and I can't remember your handle. Um, that are up at the moment. What a sweet soul. This is just such a wicked deck. I have the first edition, so the backs have been changed to be all without the borders. Um, the cardstock is fantastic um, in this deck. Another deck I don't see a lot of, and I really hope she gets funded because I think it'd be really cool to, for her to get the funds to do another round. I've seen a couple of us have this deck. It's so colourful. Another lovely, lovely tarot deck I don't see a lot of, or enough of, I don't think. Maybe a, a little bit more than some of them on here, like some of them I never, never see. But this is like, decks I feel like should get some more love, I guess. I need to stop saying that. I need to stop telling myself off too. Uh, the next one is the tarot. Decent Koi, Cross, 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 oh my gosh, by Lisa, really lovely box, um, you know, a nice hard box, I don't know if I've done a review of this, I think I have when I did get this years ago, so before YouTube, you get a really nice booklet, which is colour, lovely, um, Different body shapes, different people, like it's not a, not a whitewashed tarot deck. Lovely, lovely cardstock, that's the back. So a stunning deck as well. Not one that I see a lot of. Oh gosh, this card, hey, like, <sighs> yep, we can argue with each other in front of kids and they get them as well. It's a powerful card. And I love that Athena is the Queen of Swords. It's 
So a really nice, also another another nice deck for some multiculturalism and different representations in the tarot. I know that um, is it was it Beth? Someone no, someone did a list of tarot decks that have you know in, are more inclusive, and I, I hope this was in there. Um, I have a problem. <laughs> I'm a tarot addict. <clears throat> this is the first edition um, Dalinoff tarot. I love the backs actually, the second one I've got to admit, but um, oh, I love this deck. I don't use it very much. Um, I daren't take an edger to it and round the edges off. Not sure if this, well, the first edition isn't available, but I'm um, not sure if you can still get this deck. So, this is the Dalinoff Tarot. Beautiful cardstock. Don't see enough of this around either, maybe because it's more of a collector's tarot, I don't know. That's another one that I feel is a bit underrated. As you can see, I found this very difficult to narrow this down. Maybe someone should have put it like a, a deck limit. But I guess you get to have a look at some of my pretties. Next is the Clover Tarot by Nika Byrne. That's the back. I love this deck. I worked with this deck a lot a couple of years ago and um, I don't know if I'm oh gee, I don't know if I'm uh, other tarot readers do this but sometimes things kind of go in a cycle and I know that um, Owl513 talks about how as a pagan um, and a solitary witch the seasons really do kind of align what she's working with and I find that very much for myself as well but sometimes I even go through yearly cycles where Sometimes I work with a deck for a long, quite exclusively for, you know, over a year or a year and then I kind of put it away for a while and then I'll come back to it. This is another indie deck. I love this Three of Cups so much. Oh, it's so beautiful. So that's another really underrated deck. I don't see that a lot. You get a nice book too with that. A colour book. I'm going to keep that one to the end because it's one of the main, oh gosh, the, uh, it's fine, it just went on the table. The next one, I've only got four more decks, <laughs> only four more decks, is the Ellis deck by Taylor Ellis. I have the first edition, I think. Yeah, I think so. I have the first edition and I love the otherworldly feel and the, I mean the graphic element to it just floats on my boat like nothing else. So I adore that, um, I adore that part of it that it's a very different graphic deck. I just don't know, so colourful and so cool and each one of the uh, major arcana has a different font. I just like cool stuff like that. I love the bold colours and again I worked with this a lot when I first got here three years ago and I haven't kind of, gosh it's going to be three years next month guys. That's crazy. Like look at her. She's bad. Nah, it's badass. Um, and I don't see enough of this. Can't believe it's been three years since I moved. Crazy. I love that, like stop, like like the interpretations are rad. I believe you can still get this deck. I know there's more than one version. You can get like a plastic one and I really, really like this deck. You get a little, well, when I bought the deck, you got a little printed off little flyer almost with it. Um, one, another one I don't see a lot of and I don't, oh gosh, and I don't understand why. 
um, is the Tarot of the Water. I have the other 78 cards and I'll probably have Carnival as well and I'll probably get the um, Space One, what are they calling it? Cosmic, I think, Cosmos or, no, not Cosmos. Oh my gosh, there's another deck. There's too many. I would be here all day. <laughs> and it gets tiring. I am obsessed with the water. Want to be a marine biologist if this is the first video of mine you've ever seen. If not, you know that about me already. Um, obsessed with the water. I've swam with sharks, whale sharks, dolphins, seals. I did marine science at school. Like, I obsessed with the ocean. Whaling physically hurts my soul. Um, so I love this deck that it's all connected and themed to the ocean. I'm going to be working with a lot of watery, oceany decks in summer, um, even though I'm going to be spending part of it in, um, in Australia. Because for me, growing up in Oz, summer was all about finding water <laughs> coming from a country that has you know not a lot of fresh water and we have to look after our water resources which I wish people in Vancouver would learn um because you're gonna need to learn at some point guys um you know the endless days spent at the beach kind of thing so collaborative decks can they be problematic I guess I kind of think that's cool what everyone brings to. I've just started to work with this a little bit more. And like I said, in summer, this is probably going to get extremely worked out. The back is so pretty and the cards are big and like cardstock is great. They know what they're doing. The artists assembled and uh, Trish and Katie are uh, fast becoming good friends of mine um, online. One day, one day I'll meet everybody when I, I'll meet everybody's and we'll have, we'll have scones, scones, scones. Um, we'll have scones and cream and jam and tea and oh my God, we'd have like a tea party with the tarot. I need to do that. Who's in Melbourne? Shout out who's in Melbourne and wants to do a tea party, tarot tea party with me because I would freaking love to see some of you. I'm going to be there. I'm homesick. Guys, I'm very, 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 very homesick. So my little man and I are going home for a month. I'm still working. Um... The academy will be open, summer school is going to go as planned and more information about that is coming real soon, like next week. Um, yeah, I'm still working, readings will be done, I'm going to hopefully get out and do some readings in some very special places. Um, I need to see my sister, she's never met her nephew, I'm just, I'm desperately homesick, like I want to cry about it just thinking about how homesick I am, so I get to see some family and I just need, you know, you just need some family love, I'm very close to my family and very far away from them. So I'm going home. This is like a self-care trip. Um, and uh, I'm very fortunate to have people be taking care of me while I'm while I'm there. So it's not... And plus my son is still quite little. So, all right. Anyway, side note. So summer is going to be a bit switched for me, but um, you can still book readings with me and work with me and do the coaching. All that, all my clients are going to be taken care of. I will not abandon you. I just need some family hugs. So these are the only two mainstream published decks I'm going to talk about. And then I am done. The first one is the Cosmic Tarot. And I don't know why this deck doesn't get more love. It is phenomenal. Another deck that is extremely multicultural. Um, beautiful. I worked with this. I've had this deck for like going 10 years plus. Um, and I worked with this deck a lot many, many moons ago. But I really adore it. This devil is so cool. Oh, sorry about that. I love this lover's card. So I feel like this doesn't get enough love. 
I do see it every now and then, but I think it's really underrated for how beautiful it is. <clears throat> gorgeous. Gorgeous, darling, gorgeous. Can't wait to see my dad, who talks like Michael Caine. I'm just going to have a big dad hug. Um, and then the last one is the Ancestral Path Tarot, which sits in this very right away box of mine, but um, it's really gorgeous. But this is by Julie Cecilia Watts, published by US Game Systems. And it is, it talks about, it's very, it, the whole point of this deck is multicultural and to help connect you with your ancestors wherever they may be from beautiful and I love the size of this deck I love the uh, love that um, yeah US game systems do pretty good cardstock like I'm pretty so it's another really great deck that I don't see enough of. I don't feel like it gets enough love. And I had a thought about that. I was gonna, I wasn't gonna really chime in on tarot so white. Um, I mean, like, should I? Should I just shut up because I'm a white person? <sighs> like, I know I'm privileged. I know white that I have white privilege going for me. Um, you know, I understand that. Um, but I did want to, to, and I have read a few people's responses to that, but I did want to say that something that I've found, and it has been mentioned in this, um, in this thread, is that we don't seem to, we don't seem to, we don't seem to, maybe getting wrong, we don't seem to expect more from publishers to do this. And we don't seem to maybe support people who are trying to... It's changing, like with the Ghetto Tarot um, and with the New Worlds Tarot. It's changing and even, I'm, you know, I'm not doing this, the plug here, but like my, oracle, my new Oracle deck, it's... it's want, I want it to be a, a representation of modern spirituality. And I live in a very multicultural city and I've lived in a very, I grew up in a very multicultural country. Uh, I don't look around and see just white faces like ever, <laughs> never do I do that. Like I don't live in that kind of, um, those cities at all. Um, so for me it was just, and like family members and people I consider my freaking like my family are from all over the world. So I don't, um, yeah, I don't, I don't see, um, I don't see all white, but I do see a lot of white in our decks and I do see a lot of whitewashing of, you know, movies and like it just, it really angers me because I had a conversation with someone about the importance of representation and the importance of being able to see yourself um, in your media and in media and how come that was a big deal for me Um in when I'm designing things and when I work with things and when I what I want to see on TV and why Jessica Jones this is just representation from a feminine perspective why Jessica Jones was such a huge like why I loved that show so much not you know because I, I mean I have a huge girl crush on Kirsten Ritter and Luke Cage is like Oh my god, that's one amazing looking man. Um, and you know, it wasn't just that, but it was more like these are empowered female characters. So I can only imagine the disappointment, the real disappointment that um, other cultures have in their, you know, in, in the fact that we they don't get seen more, or it's like Ben Belwen said, it's over sexualized or stereotyped to being, you know. The, the geisha or the um, the sexy schoolgirl or whatever it is for for however or the wise old sage you know those some of those uh, very heavily Asian stereotyped portrayals so I yeah and then there's the whole question on cultural appropriation and I had a 
itchy. Um, hay fever. I had a card in mind for the Awaken Soul Oracle deck and I, based on my experience, and I will talk about it when this card is ready, but it was a very, it's a very important First Nation and Native American Indian ritual. So I actually asked my friend and fellow worker here, he's a reader and an energy worker and a healer and a shaman here in Vancouver, who I've known for three years since I got here. And um, I asked him, I said, "Is would this be, I want to do it from this place, this is the place I'm coming from, but I totally get that this could be seen as appropriation and seen as disrespectful and I want to ask you do you think this would be so seen as that way? Like, I'm not going to take it personally, tell it to me straight. And he said, yeah, it could be <laughs> totally could be seen that way. And he said, your intentions are good. You know, I know you and I know that you would never just be like sticking on feathers and, and running around because that's so, don't even get me started how disrespectful that is. Um, I have First Nation my on my mother's side. We are Micmac. Um, so yeah, don't, don't even get me started on, on that kind of rubbish. Uh, and, um, but he said, it, it's a, it's a very sacred thing. So you, and I said, well, this is the other thing I was thinking, what do you think? And he said, that, that's a better way to go. So I understand that too. And being a creator and wanting to make sure that I'm honoring my creative process, but also honoring, um, you know, cultures that have been just like decimated, and there are, that's a reason why I don't buy some decks because I'm just like, mm, you are a white person talking about a culture you have no idea about. And I'm just going to go that way with my money. Um, so, yeah, it's, it is. It's, we, need to, we need to support more people who are creating stuff that is more inclusive and we need to expect more from our publishers. And we need to invite more conversations um, and ask people uh, how we can be better allies in regards to getting some of this stuff out there. So um, it's a very hot button topic and I didn't want to sort of grandstand it and, and start talking about it from a place where I was like, I know everything. But, um, but I just thought I'd share a few things. Uh, so this has become a really long video, so thank you if you're still watching, and thank you to Kelly and Maddox for bringing that up, and thank you to Katie Flowers, are you in Melbourne, um, <laughs> for uh, for that beautiful prompt on underrated decks, and I hope you have a lovely, lovely day.